Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, they all did an excellent job. I think we should give them a round of applause. It takes a lot of courage to go out in specialties, uh, especially in those models, and do that. While they were talking, I, I was reminded of a quote, because I think I'm the only one who started this right off the bat. And the nice way of saying it is, if you want a thing done, don't give it to the man familiar with the art who knows that it cannot be done. Give it to someone who does not know that it cannot be done, and he will do it. The translation of that is, I was young and dumb. <laughs> so we started this straight out of residency with zero patients and, and a philosophy, of course, that insurance complicates more than it helps. Uh, we know that you don't have car insurance for gasoline and you wouldn't buy it if someone offered it to you. So why have health insurance for family medicine or really even a lot of specialty care when what we can do can be so affordable? So we started, like I said, with zero patients and we built it on a membership model. Um, AAA, car insurance, all these other things, Netflix. People appreciate the value of a, of a membership because it's unpredictable. They don't know how much they're going to use. Uh, so our prices are $10 a month for kids, $50, $75, or $100 for adults through the age ranges. And that's for unlimited home visits, work visits, office visits, um, and even technology visits. So email, webcam, cell phone, texting, Twitter, Facebook, Skype, basically anything because we're not a HIPAA provider uh, and because we're not reimbursed by insurance, we're not limited to how we can communicate with our patients. Furthermore, we have no co-pays for anything in our office. Then any procedure we can do is included free of charge. So that's laceration repair, biopsies, joint injections, ultrasounds, spirometry, EKG, Holter, DEXA, audiometry, urinalysis, rapid strep, cryotherapy, your basic family medicine type stuff. All those represent something that's very affordable for us to provide for our patients but, and a very high value to them. EKG pads used to cost 3.3 cents a, a, a patch. We upgraded to the gold package for 3.5 cents a patch because nothing's too good for our patients. Then uh, something that we do that's very unique that uh, Dr. Campy uh, hinted on is we dispense medications and labs wholesale out of our office. Kansas, where we're based, is one of 44 states that allow physicians to dispense wholesale medications. So we work with Andameds, andameds.com. They're the third largest wholesale distributor and the largest I'll work with physicians. And so we get everything from the same places that the pharmacy gets it, but at a fraction of the cost. And again, because we're profitable off of our membership, we don't have to upcharge the cost of the medications. So a couple good examples, uh, Imitrex, normally $100, $200 a box generic that we get for $6. So, you know, it more than pays for a patient's membership. Um, well, we had a, a woman, uh, mid-30s, uninsured. She was spending $140 a month at Walgreens for Prilosec. Well, we get 1,000 Omeprazole for $55. So, uh, you know, she got her medicine for $1.55 a month and could have paid her $50 membership, but she opted for the full value of signing up her whole family, $120, plus her meds, plus 18 bucks in her pocket. That's the paradigm shift. That, that's the standard deviation better that I think healthcare can get to when physicians really take charge of their type of practice. Uh, I was the token evil Republican all through med school. They tried to kick me out three times, but clearly I won. Uh, be, because I, I dared to say that business isn't bad, money's not bad, and, and the combination of medicine and business isn't bad. It can be done wrong, but when done right, it. it creates a better product for our patients. And, and we take a very bold stance to say that true doctor-patient advocacy is fighting for your patients, not being complicit in a broken uh, insurance-based system when you know there's a better way. It means creating a better value for your patients and, and str figuring out, struggling to figure out how you can do that. Um, same thing with labs. We, by contracting directly with uh, LabQuest, or, um, LabCorp and Quest, we get to prices that are upwards of 90 to 95 percent off. A CBC for us is a buck fifty. A metabolic panel is two dollars. A lipid panel is a dollar fifty. Thyroid is two dollars. So now we don't have to go through Picos because our patients, it's more convenient for them to come to us and do it than it is to go anywhere else. So again, it represents a, an enormous value. All of these things that we can do allow our specialists to go back to their insurance and carve out the pieces that they don't need. You know, in the Jenga board game, that is your insurance, there's a ton of that that's unnecessary. So I think the, one of the reasons we're a very successful practice, uh, going from zero patients uh, to 1,500 in just over three years and four months and three physicians, is because we add so much value. 
We really came at it to make it very affordable, very uh, meaningful to our patients, but then all of that service allows us to go to their insurance and decrease their premiums by 30 to 60 percent. So we can go to an employer, often blue collar employers, and it, it can make the difference between hiring people or firing them, dropping insurance so they can be on state insurance or keeping it and giving them a raise. One thing that we do is we go to the partially self-funded plans that were mentioned earlier. The way that works is any money on premiums not spent during the year goes back to the employer. So we have a local gardening company, Johnson's Garden Center, and they give us permission to say these numbers, but we lowered their premiums by 55% year one. Three years later, they pay less than they did three years ago because we effectively lower their insurance each year. They're now in a partially self-funded plan, costs about $108,000 a year. Their premium went up 6% for 2014, but they got 34,000 of those premiums back because the use of our model makes their dollars very cost effective. So for physicians doing this model, of course, we wanted it to be a, a better model for our patients, a better mo model for ourselves and the employers. Um, but you know, for the physicians to do the math, we average about $49, $50 per patient per month in revenue times 600 patients per doc. That's roughly $30,000 a month or $360,000 a year. Our overhead is under 20%, so or I'm sorry, under 30%, so $120,000 per year per doc. Actually, we added our third doc, and overhead obviously didn't go up, so um, our overhead's going down uh, percentage-wise. So that gets a family doctor making somewhere between $200,000 and $240,000 a year, seeing five people a day. I saw 20 people this week. It was a good life. Um, you know, because you don't have to chart for insurance purposes, you can spend all of your time with your patients. Our average visit is 30 minutes. Or, I'm sorry, we don't schedule for less than 30 minutes, but our average visit is 45. So we have time to be there with our patients. We meet them after hours, on the weekends. We, um, just this week I had a patient, they were in Oklahoma City, to two hours away. They were at the hotel, daughter fell and hit their chin on the pool. So they called the ER and they said it'd be a three hour wait, pretty standard. So it's only two hours back to Wichita. We'll just drive back and see our doctor and get the stitches for free. So for $10 a month for their three kids, we've saved all three kids' membership for several years just based on what it would have cost to get her chin sewn up. Um, and, and numerous examples like that create a much better value. So in, in, a, in a culture of, of fear right now where I think doctors are worried about insurance and government and ICD-10 and all this noise, we're very positive of, of what this can do for us. Our patients are incredibly happy to be with us. We, we take care of a full scope of people from the very poor to the very rich because everyone sees a different value here. Uh, ironically, I think the poor people need this more than anybody. They need to make every dollar stretch as far as possible. So when we can um, take a patient from the free clinic in town, which has a $45 copay and a CEO who makes $190,000 a year, <coughs> non-clinical position, uh, she was paying $45 a copay and $150 for trigger point injections for her fibro. Now I'm not a big trigger point guy, but the fact is it's 30 cents in lidocaine that we do for free. So she's an otherwise poor patient going to the free clinic, now paying $50 a month membership, getting all of her meds at wholesale prices, plus her procedure, she's making 150 bucks uh, a month by being a member here. So again, that's the kind of, of dynamical shift that I think we can really see in the next couple of years. You never see a gas station try to take car insurance for gasoline. It just doesn't make sense. If they did, they'd tell you what gas stations you can go to, how many times you can fill up, and you'd have to get pre-approved for a trip out of town. Um, and so I, I think the last family doc and last specialist even to, to bill insurance, turn out the lights. Why stay in a broken system when you can make more money seeing fewer patients providing better care that actually saves your patient money? I, I, I joke, if you get it, you should wave the BS flag because it should sound too good to be true. Uh, we, we've all been working so hard swimming upstream for so many years working in a broken system, but, but there really is a better way, uh, a logical way that, that now after three and a half years, and of course we're not the only ones doing it, but it, it's proven. It's, it's got the data. We can show better results, more cost-effective results. You can dispense medications to your patients to save them a ton. That, that's us, again, patient doctor advocacy, doctor patient advocacy. We, we should fight for that. Um, there's six states that don't allow physicians to dispense meds, and we're working in three of them to reverse that. 
because if I can get you a better value, why not? I can draw labs and get those cheaper for you. Uh, I can do imaging uh, that's usually negotiated at 80% off. Um, we've contracted with our ortho group. They'll come and send a, their casting nurse over and cast a patient for 50 bucks. Plain films are 20, CTs are about 150, MRIs are 350 to 400. So if we run that cash through our clinic, we save our patients a, a bundle. If we negotiate for their surgery, we usually, if we don't get less than uh, or more than 50% off, we go somewhere else. So we just, but we have the time. We, we can sit with our patients, whether they're incredibly sick or, or very healthy, and talk with them, help them out, uh, find out where their cheapest meds are. Uh, and so that, that's what we've done, and, uh, and this is the, the short version of a very long conversation. Some of the doctors have, have even visited our clinic and, and been down and heard the 14-hour version. But um, I'll sit down because I know we're running probably a little bit behind, and, and you probably have questions for the whole panel. But thank you for having us all.